Okay, I'm ready. Where is she? And there she was. This video is brought to you by Sundance Now, the streaming service we watch for the very best films and original TV dramas. Get 30 days completely free with our link and the promo code, The Take. How I Met Your Mother is a show about a man looking for his soulmate. But while Ted Mosby finds the woman of his dreams in the very first episode, Robin Scherbatsky doesn't share his fantasy of life-changing romance. What is this doing in my champagne? Despite attracting the admirations of a long line of men. After you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Robin has other things on her mind besides finding the perfect guy. Guys are like the subway. You miss one, another one comes along in five minutes. Refreshingly, this character, who was the center of the show's major love triangle, fit the archetype of the quintessential career woman who puts ambition before love, doesn't want kids, and is okay with being single. I don't want kids. I've never wanted kids, and never in a million years Will I ever want kids? Robin made choices like these appear not only valid, but even aspirational, representing a powerful moment for a character type that rarely gets positive treatments in pop culture. Yet in the show's home stretch, How I Met Your Mother arguably let Robin down by turning her into a stock love interest, there to deliver a happy ending for its protagonist. It is meant to be, and you know why? Because I mean it to be. And not following through on the person she really was. It's a great look, but you're looking at the wrong girl. Here's our take on Robin and why her role as a professionally focused woman on an influential love-centered sitcom mattered. Welcome to Robin 101. You're watching The Take. Thanks for watching and be sure to share and subscribe. The premise of How I Met Your Mother is that Ted is the male version of the stereotypical rom-com heroine, looking for someone to sweep him off his feet. Nothing hotter than a guy planning out his own imaginary wedding, huh? He's so in touch with his feelings that he throws himself at Robin on their very first date. I think I'm in love with you. What? <laughs> what? What? Ted has a plan that's more traditionally assumed to be the fixation of women. He wants to fall in love, get married, have kids, and live out the Norman Rockwell American dream. But Robin doesn't want that dream. I don't know where I'm gonna be in five years. And I don't wanna know, I want my life to be an adventure. The inverse of Ted, Robin is driven by priorities our culture normally associates with men. Ambition, intensity, selfishness, and living for the moment without her future set in stone. I don't plan out every second of my life like you do. I don't plan out every- Oh really, what is all of this? When she meets Ted, what she really wants isn't a boyfriend, but a group of fun friends to take the edge off. I only moved here in April and I'm always working and I just haven't met a lot of good people so far. She's passionate about becoming successful in TV news. Because I care, Don. I, I care about the show. I, I care about my career. And almost always chooses her work over the possibility of romance. They want me to anchor the news tonight starting with the night of her very first date with Ted. We got a jumper, some crazy guy on the Manhattan Bridge. Come on, you're covering it. Um, all right, I'll be right there. Robin's whole personality is also stereotypically male. From her taste in liquor. I love a scotch that's old enough to order its own scotch. And pop culture. Can quote obscure lines from Ghostbusters? Ray, when someone asks you if you're a god, you say yes. <laughs> to her comfort with guns. You have to clean your gun. The conceit of a man who acts like a woman pining for a woman who acts like a man was central to the romantic tension driving How I Met Your Mother. You know, Ted, not everyone is as much of a woman as you. Co-creator Craig Thomas said, quote, we wanted to show a guy who was in love with this girl and she just doesn't want that. Look, it would not be smart if we got together. I, I mean, I'm looking to settle down. She's looking for all... By flipping the stereotypical gender attitudes toward romance in Ted and Robin, the show got the opportunity to explore both male sensitivity and vulnerability and female independence and self-determination. 
as the woman who acts like a man. I'll have a Johnny Walker blue neat and a Monte Cristo number two. Robin is a prime example of the cool girl trope the take made a previous video about. Chick who's like super hot, but then like loves Xbox, down for pizza. Just like one of the guys, but much prettier, she's a male fantasy. Hey, you wanna go upstairs and watch Sports Center? She's basically a collection of male tastes and behaviors in a hot female body. Surprisingly good. Right? I told you so. And men obsess over her, at least in part because she expresses not wanting the commitment that the more stereotypical woman demands. I mean, the most I can handle right now is something casual. Looking closer, though, Robin's tomboyish behavior has more complicated roots stemming from her childhood. Robin's father wanted her to be a boy. He wanted a son. And the fact that I was a girl didn't change his plan. What do you mean? <sighs> My full legal name is Robin Charles Scherbatsky Jr. So she is the way she is because her father raised her to embrace stereotypically male activities like shooting, smoking, drinking, and hockey. Until he could no longer keep denying the fact that she was a girl. Teammates don't kiss! Oh my god. I have no son. Though the show usually plays Robin's boyishness for laughs or as an attractive quirk, her acting like a boy while growing up was her way of trying to please and be accepted by the first man in her life. And as an adult, she's still haunted by her father's rejection. Robin's deep-seated need for attention can be traced back to her father's emotional distance. So this suggests that on some level, Robin's cool girl persona, down to her beliefs that she isn't like other girls and doesn't want a relationship, is rooted in the desire to be desirable to men. My father was a cigar fanatic. It was the only way to get his attention. Father issues. Hot. <laughs> Robin actively avoids the appearance of being like other women. What is it with you and women? Ugh. They're so annoying. I'm glad that you're my only female friend. Girls are always whining and crying over every little thing. And is deeply upset when her jealousy for Ted makes her not recognize herself. Look at me. I I'm acting crazy and jealous and paranoid. This is how people act in relationships. And that's why I avoid relationships. And whenever Robin has feelings that aren't convenient, like for Ted or Barney, she represses them, always playing the cool girl instead of expressing her real emotions. I have to go to Germany and surprise her. Totally what I was thinking. Get out of my head, man. Moreover, being a commitment phobe also doesn't automatically mean she doesn't want a commitment, but rather that she's scared of it. She thought about how opening yourself up to another person usually means opening yourself up to going a little crazy. She thought about how much easier it was just to be alone. How I Met Your Mother suggests that Robin's really trying to avoid the possibility of getting hurt. The second you get close to a guy, you want to bail. And these fears are justified when, in her relationship with Don, she uncharacteristically turns down a career opportunity in order to put romance first, only to be burned when Don chooses that very job over her. Can you imagine what it's like to have the phone ring and it's your dream job on the other end? Yes. I can. Good luck in Chicago, Don. Robin's character development eventually shows her becoming a person who does want real love. But actually, the man who helps her discover this most naturally and in spite of herself is not the uber-romantic Ted who's long been obsessed with her, but the equally commitment-phobic Barney, the member of the gang most like Robin, who she eventually marries. We both think the marriage commitment thing's a drag. We both want something casual and fun, and we clearly get along really well. Even though they get divorced in the finale, for most of its run, How I Met Your Mother makes a compelling argument that Barney is a much better match for Robin than Ted. Not only do both of them share a love of cigars, booze, and laser tag. You just saved my life, didn't you? Thank you later. Let's keep moving. These little bastards are everywhere. But both of them are also adamant about their lack of a desire to ever have children. Okay, yes, kids are not my favorite thing in the world, but I like them. Well, you don't want to have them. I like sports cars, but it doesn't mean I want to push a Ferrari through my vagina. Robin's lack of interest in kids, her desire to put other priorities first, was an important, positive alternative to most female role models on screen. Despite her not having this end goal, Robin and her happiness were still valued by this romantic comedy. Mom, I'm not marrying some future possibility of starting a family. I'm marrying a girl who 
who means more to me than kids. Like her relationship hang-ups, Robin's feelings about motherhood are also complex. She's painted as having a phobia. Scared of babies. What? And when the choice is taken away from her because she discovers she's unable to have biological children, her response isn't what she or we expected. I guess it's, it's just nice knowing that you could someday do it if you changed your mind. Ultimately, there's honesty in the fact that she's conflicted about big life questions, that her behaviors are shaped by her environment, and that she has to confront doubts about the decisions she's made. I'm always putting my career ahead of my relationships, and to be honest, there's a lot of lonely nights in that job description. In the end, though, the show let down the complexity it had built up for Robin as it barreled toward its rom-com fairy tale ending. Often, the story of the single career woman is captured in the question, can women have it all? You really do want it all. I can do it! I can have it all! The traditional example of the working woman on screen is trained to avoid emotional attachment. Starting now, you are a hard, heartless career gal. Go to work, be awesome at it, and don't waste time on foolish flights of fancy. Focusing on her professional success and putting relationships second, or not worrying about them at all. <laughs> to why a person isn't married. How many different reasons can there be? 65. Modeled on the tenets of second wave feminism from the 60s to the 80s, inspirational pop culture about the career woman like Mary Tyler Moore put forward a version of female life that prized workplace equality and access to the same opportunities as men. Women in this time period were encouraged to act just like men to have any chance of succeeding. The conversation of a raise is not inappropriate at this moment, but do not be timid. You presented like a man, now act like one. Later examples from Working Girl in the late 80s to Sex in the City starting in the late 90s reflected the conversations of their time periods as well by working the questions of femininity and romance back into the picture. I have a head for business and a bod for sin. In Sex and the City, four female characters have prioritized work well into their 30s and set out to be women who have sex like men. But as they remain unattached, these working women also question their decisions. Single and fabulous question mark? There was no question mark in play. I would never have agreed to be in an article. Single and fabulous question mark. And spend a great deal of time fixating on their interactions with men. How does it happen that four such smart women have nothing to talk about but boyfriends? Career women characters since then have continued to juggle finding fulfillment in their work. You're married to your job. <gasps> oh my God. With deciding how much of a traditional domestic life they want while being presented with an ever shifting set of role models. I grew up wanting to be you. I grew up wanting to be Samantha Stevens on Bewitched. And we can see the influence of the career woman's history shaping Robin as well. But I don't actually cry in front of people or Cry at all, for that matter. She's incredibly driven with an enviable work ethic, even when she's toiling in obscurity on a little watched show. And if I can't even get my best friends to watch, who's going to watch? She repeatedly watches her romances suffer due to work and finds that men are not as okay with her all consuming ambition as they profess to be. This is so not great! I'm sorry that I have to work while I'm here. It's called being on assignment. Her commitment to what she wanted, in spite of all of that, made Robin an important entry in the pantheon of career women characters throughout the years. She's the most professionally accomplished among her gang. Robin got famous. In the next few days, she would. Meet the mayor, go on Letterman, and even have a deli sandwich named after her. And that's not even counting the whole other career she has behind her. I was a teenage pop star in Canada. What happens to these women as they get older and it's time for the TV show to end? Generally speaking, they wind up settling down, no matter how much they've protested. I love you. I love you, Steve. As University College Dublin professor of film studies and screen culture Diane Negra put it, Sex and the City came to closure in a strikingly ideologically conservative fashion with the safe settlement of its four ensemble members into commitment and motherhood. And in the end, Carrie Bradshaw married John James Preston in a labelist dress. I do. 
30 Rock finds a more practical, modern solution by marrying Liz Lemon to a man willing to do most of the domestic work around the house. I hate work, and evidently you miss it. I know. I'm a terrible mother. Oh my god, if you were a dude, you would not even be thinking that. Peggy Olsen on Mad Men finds her romantic happiness inside the workplace, ending up with her co-worker. And so does Bojack Horseman's Princess Carolyn, who marries her former assistant, Judah. While you're signing things, I have a stack of holiday cards for the staff. I took the liberty of writing little personal messages to everyone on your behalf. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Some of these working women also navigate motherhood, but in the most realistic feeling examples, this is not always something that comes as naturally to them. I mean, work makes sense to me, and I'm good at it. I don't feel that way about my baby. And their most defining relationships may still be at work. I love you too, Jack. Like so much of pop culture, How I Met Your Mother pays lip service to the idea that women can and should be fulfilled without needing a traditional partner and family. Besides, there are other ways to have kids. There's adoption, surrogacy. No, Kevin, it's not just that I can't have kids. I don't want kids only to undercut that idea with its resolution. By the end of How I Met Your Mother, Robin has achieved the level of professional success she always wanted. I am not everywhere. The... Okay, I'm some places. But winds up traveling to such a degree that it damages her relationship with Barney, eventually leading them to divorce. Is this just not working anymore? This is the same problem Robin's had in all of her relationships. So this breakup seems to confirm the message that Robin's career is incompatible with a forever romance. While the divorce is a disappointing resolution for fans of the couple, having How I Met Your Mother leave Robin as a content single woman would have made a lot of sense. But that's not what happens. Robin no longer fits into the group now that she's not dating Ted or Barney. The gang is my ex-husband hitting on slutty cops right in front of me, and it's the guy I probably should have ended up with, with the beautiful mother of his child. In the show's final moments, Robin's rescued from her lonely existence and winds up with Ted, proving that no matter how much Robin insists, she wants to be and is comfortable being alone. Ted, you know how I feel about marriage. This can't be considered a happy ending. The point of the story is that... Is that you totally, totally, totally have the hots for Aunt Robin. Robin's resolution with Ted feels both inevitable and forced, which it was. The conclusion scene with Ted's future children was shot eight years before the show actually ended, long before the story followed Robin's career taking off and developed her chemistry with Barney. The best parts of How I Met Your Mother give Robin a complexity outside of her relationships with both Ted and Barney. But as the show goes on, those parts of her identity become harder and harder to find. Even though Robin has never wanted children, and even though she's made her priorities clear, This way there's no one to hold me back in life. No one to keep me from traveling where I want to travel. No one getting in the way of my career. She still feels a little too sad and melancholy when that door is actually closed to her. Of course, it's one thing not to want something, it's another to be told you can't have it. When Barney is finally so happy to become a dad at the end of the show, You are the love of my life. The implicit message is that Robin wasn't able to give him what he really wanted. And she's ultimately pushed into Ted's existing family, even though there's no reason to believe her work ethic won't present exactly the same problems it did for her and Barney, which will only be compounded by adding Ted's kids into that picture. And so, How I Met Your Mother, like so many other TV shows that started out differently than they ended up, winds up arguing that the only way women can truly be fulfilled is through a romantic relationship. One that often serves her male counterpart's story more than it makes sense with her own character development. And when you love someone, you just, you, you don't stop, ever. Even when people roll their eyes or call you crazy, even then, especially then. A more fun, consistent, and interesting version of Robin could have stuck to her guns and found genuine professional happiness without needing Ted. Because if you're paying attention, this is who she's really been all along. An independent woman who's doing just fine without being rescued by a fairy tale. I guess I just like the idea of putting all my Robin Scherbatsky knowledge to good use, you know? This video is brought to you by Sundance Now. Whether you're looking for true crime, period pieces, or binge-worthy romances, Sundance Now has it all. One show you can check out on Sundance Now is the chilling docuseries Jonestown, Terror in the Jungle. 
It explores the meteoric rise of cult leader Jim Jones and the tragic murders of the Disciples of the People's Temple. In heartbreaking interviews, the survivors of the infamous Jonestown Massacre relive their harrowing escape and try to heal. Right now, Sundance Now is offering a free 30-day trial to our viewers. Just click the link in our description below, sundancenow.com, and use the promo code THETAKE at checkout.